Uh, third album. Can we talk about the title first of all? Gorgeous. What's that all about? It's about ambiguity for the 90s. Ambi yeah, right. No, we just like the idea. We, we started off this album being really, really lush and everything that seemed to suit it early on, and then it went really, really rocking, but we kept it anyway. So, I think it's, it's quite a good title. title. It's lovely. It's welcoming and warm and <laughs> that kind of thing, you know. And there's some interesting um, collaborations that you've made on this album. Let's first of all talk about the one with UB40, 1 in 10. Whose idea was that and why did you decide to do it? Oh, it was UB40's it was, idea, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah it, was, it was just an idea we used to do, because um, me and Darren are DJs as well. It's just an idea where Darren used to spin in a UB40 track over this other sort of hardcore Belgium track. And uh, it just started from there, we went into the studio and uh, sampled it, tried it out, and then we asked them, could we, could we actually do it? They loved the idea, just went from there. What was their reaction to it? It was good because it turned out that their, their engineers and their producers ended up doing a version of it as well, and it came out as a double 12. So it was really good, it was nice. It's, it's nice to have that sort of that rapport between two artists. Like they liked it, we liked it. We, you know, we liked the original, and it'll be, we, we hope we give it justice you know, at the end of the day. So. Another um, one of the sort of standout cuts um, on the album is the chat that you've done with um, Ian McCulloch. How on yeah. earth did this come together? And again, you know, whose idea was it? It's all about pop star drinking mates, isn't it? Pop star <laughs> yeah. drinking mates. Yes. You know, when you're a pop star like us, you know, you, you meet up with these pop stars down the pub and go for jam sessions and things like that. <laughs> Result of one of those fabulous Sunday afternoon jam sessions. But, See what um, I mean? It's like a mutual no, but, respect as well, wasn't it? Straight away, like, we, we admired what Ian had done in the past and, you know, in the last couple of years as well with his solo career. And it would be nice to get him over, you know, something foreign like what we do, the harder sort of edge dance stuff. But with Ian's golden voice, you know, it mm. worked, you worked a treat. Do yeah. you think these collaborations kind of um, make your music more palatable to people in a way? I hope it does. I hope it brings across that the dance music is not one dimensional. It's not what, what you see on certain shows. Dance music is everything, you know. I think that's one of the problems we have to deal with is that, that people lump sort of dance music and techno as one big thing. Mm. And they tend to sort of stereotype it. And it's, it's so broad. And sometimes you have to invite people into the inn to have a look before they realise that they'll like it. You know, mm. so. That's, that's the idea behind it, isn't it. I mean, you've remixed a lot of people. You know, you've sort of worked with a lot of new people now as well. I mean, who would you like to, in your heart of hearts, like to collaborate with? Sort of, yeah, sort of. I know EMF did it, but sort of people like Tom Jones or Sinatra. You know, somebody... See, because, because like, we see ourselves as producers and as uh, music writers, we admire sort of the, you know, that, that special type of voice. You know, like, Ian's got a, a special type of voice, like Bjork from Sugar Cubes, that sort of flavour for somebody who's got that sort of flavour. You know? We've been having singing lessons, we've been practising all that voice to men. Yeah, yeah. Once we've got that together, we'll just leather all <laughs> <and> <laughs>